Our subject this morning, can the saints help us? A very sensible question. Can the saints help us? To answer this question, we must know something about what saints are, who they are, and especially what they do. If we understand that, then I'm sure we can answer the question as to whether saints can help us or not. Now, a definition of a saint is this. A saint is especially one who is regenerated, sanctified, made holy, and consecrated. A saint is that kind of a person. Let us discuss just one aspect, regenerated. A saint is one who has been spiritually born again by contacting the presence of God within him. And by that spiritual birth, he is one with the omniscience of God. If you will remember that about true saints, that they have that one attribute, common attribute, that they are one with God's omniscience, and that they live and act and work from that omniscience, I think you can answer the question whether saints can help you. I think the question is answered certainly, yes. But there's another aspect. You have to be able to be where the saint is and lives to receive his help. It is this fact that the saint lives and is one in the omniscience of God that they can help us if we can contact them. I'll tell you one or two little instances which will illustrate the availability of the help of saints at all times, if we can contact them. I'll try and tell the story just in as few words as possible. I think you've heard it before. One time I was very ill, a year or two after I'd met the Master. And I remember in January of that same year, I asked him how I was doing, as I guess everyone likes to know how they're getting along. He said, all right, he said, but watch your health next summer. Well, I, uh, as usual, forgot it and went along merrily, but when the summer came, I didn't forget it because I was very ill. And this particular Wednesday, it seemed to have reached its climax. And I was at my summer home in Duxbury on Plymouth Bay, and I was really catching it, as they say. I had been thinking of the Master, as I always did, realizing that the true Guru watched over the disciple. We know that, but until we see its manifestation, we cannot truly appreciate it. And in this particular day, it had been very severe. And at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, I heard a great racket out in the driveway. Someone hollering, doctor, doctor, doctor. And finally we aroused ourselves and looked out and the master was there. He had come up from New York, got hold of a car, someone, someone to drive him up. And he appeared in the driveway, two or three o'clock in the morning after hunting all up and down the shore trying to find me and arousing the whole neighborhood. But he found me. He found me. And with his coming, my troubles began to be over. So that showed whether the saints can help you or not. It depends upon whether you realize what they have and what they are. They are one with the omniscience of God. His omnipresence is ever attentive, all-knowing, ever watchful of you if you but trust it. And a true saint living in that knows knows when you need him, knows when you need help, as I did on this occasion. 
and in other emergencies. It was the same thing. I realized that if I could contact that omniscience of God, the Master being a true saint to my way of thinking and the thinking of many, many others, would know it and would respond. And that is just what happened in many emergencies. The way to contact the omniscience of God where the saints live is by following the techniques left by a saint as our master. And if you can contact that God, especially the omniscience of God at the Christ Center, the omniscience of God knows immediately, instantly, that you need help. Now these are the true facts of life. This is truth, not imagination. So understand that. It is worthwhile to follow a saint like our beloved master, know his teachings which he has left, and thereby you will contact the omniscience in which he now dwells. And that applies to all the saints of all the ages. There is one omniscience of God. All the saints are in that omniscience, and so are we. If we can but break the binding barriers of this outward consciousness which makes us feel separated from God and the great saints. So let us understand, the saints are available. Their help is available as the omniscience of the One Father. Master told me, and I have never forgotten it, and I hope all of you never forget it, that if you are in the own vibration, the great Amen spoken of in the Bible, which can be contacted <coughs> at the Christ Center, if you are there, you have the protection of the omniscience of God, which means the protection of the saints, and especially the one whom you follow. Realize that. Many times I have proved that, and I know many others in this room have proved that same thing. Yes, the saints can help us if we can contact them, because they express and live from the manifestation of the omniscience of God's presence. That's why. Someone is asked, what good are the saints? Well, I think I have answered it, but one thing we must realize that they delight the soul. Why? Because they are in favor with God. They have God contact. And because of that, they express that joy and optimism which we all need so well. In this world we find pessimism exists and because of that it's not a very good place to live. But the saint, the saint is one with the omniscience of God, which is bliss. And therefore the saint expresses that great optimism which we need. And that is very, very very refreshing. I used to go to the Master with a list of troubles that long. But when I came into his presence, I forgot to ask the question. And it was very refreshing because the saint expresses the unity of God's presence, which is one thing, peace and bliss and joy, which we need especially at this time, do we not? Now, <clears throat> godliness is what the saints express. Throughout the ages, they have lived in all, at all times. But they have one common language, and that is the language of the soul which is the bliss of God's presence, and they express that. And they also know that in this outward living there is no satisfaction. They know that the pleasures of this life are very short-lived, and therefore they have found that lasting presence of God. Having found that, they are free from disappointments and they express the bliss of God's presence. That's what the saints have done. Saints have risen above the duality of this consciousness, and they have reached the height. They have reached the heights of attainment 
by realizing their oneness with God, that's all, and each and every one of us can do that, because Jesus even said that, the things I shall do, I do, ye shall do, and greater things. And so the saints have attained the height. They have risen above this consciousness in which we find disappointment and all sorts of trouble. But they have shown right in this existence here now that that can be attained right while living on this earth, no matter what your business is or what your occupation is. You can find God and you can take him right with you in everything you do. What good is God unless you can do that? And what of what use are the saints? If you follow them and have what they have, the omniscience of God, then you too can reach the heights and you too can be happy in spite of this delusion of this outward existence. Realize that one great thing. Master has written one thing I'd like to just say or read to you. Untiring in their effort, he says, the saints obliterate pessimism. Well, you can't obliterate pessimism unless you know something that is far exceeding this worldly consciousness. I don't blame anybody for being pessimistic here in this life. The paradoxes are uncalled for, and the injustices are evident. But the saints do not stop there. The saints, by showing through true living that we are really not slaves, but free divine children of God, not bound by the law laws, but because we are essentially divine, that we can rise above this outward consciousness to the omnipresence of God. Now, aren't those wonderful words? That's what the saints have done. That's what we can do. Because what is a saint? You all know the answer. A sinner that didn't give up. And you and I are not going to give up. Because sometime we've got to keep on and reach the goal that the saints have reached. And so we must never forget that because the saints have superseded this outward worldly, worldly consciousness and are alive in the all-knowing, ever-attentive on the presence of God, that they are approachable instantly if you but know how to contact God. That's the first thing we must remember about the saint. And the second thing is very important, that the teachings which the saints live, if you follow them, also will lead you to the omnipresence of God, the all-knowing, ever-attentive presence of God, omnipresence of God. So those two things remember. Many people think because the Master is gone, he's not approachable. Certainly he's approachable. He's approachable through his teachings, which lead to what? To the realization of the omniscience, the omnipresence of God. Jesus said that very thing. Jesus said, when I am gone, what will I do? I will send you the Comforter. What is the Comforter? The Comforter is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Vibration, in which is the omniscience of God. That's what the Comforter is. He also said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not, will not. Words which he spoke from that Comforter, that Holy Vibration. And so we have the testimony of Jesus. Also, our own master said in one of his poems, when I am but a dream, I'm saying this because this refers to the teachings which saints lead when they have gone. He said in his poem, when I am but a dream, when you cannot locate me in unplumbed space, when you cannot find me, read my whispers of eternity, and through them, through my teachings, I will walk silently by your side and guide you with all-knowing arms until you realize, as I now realize, that I am but a dream of my cosmic beloved, the one omniscience of God. When you realize that, 
we will be together eternally. Isn't that wonderful? So through the teachings of the great ones, we can, we can contact the omniscience in which they dwell. Now a few more scriptural references about saints showing the availability of them, which is very important. We who know the master who, who did know him, we understand, but many did not have the privilege of meeting him. But you can read throughout this uh, religious history about the different saints. Now about St. Teresa, we read in the book, The Saints That Moved the World, these words showing the omnipresence of Jesus as a manifestation of the omniscience of God. We read, she not only heard these words more distinctly than even a bodily ear can hear. When God speaks, you know it. It's much better than hearing as you hear now. She saw and recognized more unmistakably than ever a bodily eye or physical perception are able to do that it was the Lord himself who spoke to her. The Lord himself had granted her guidance. Jesus said, I will send you the comforter. The Lord is the comforter, the Christ consciousness of the omniscience of God, available to everyone. The Bhagavad Gita says the same thing. Lord Krishna, a great saint, Jadavi Krishna, King Jadava, who had Christ consciousness. He speaks about the availability of the saints with these words. He who seeth me everywhere and seeth everything in me, of him I will never lose hold of. If you see the omniscience of God in every person and everything in those flowers in our life, and you keep that contact, how can God let you go? How can you be forsaken? So he says, he who established in unity worshipeth me, abiding in all beings, that yogi liveth in me, whatever his abode of living. No matter what we do, where we are, let us know the omniscience of God and not lose contact with him, then we can never be forsaken. We also read about Kabir, Kabir a great medieval saint. He spoke about the saints with these words. Because you will find that they all say the same thing in just different, a little different ways. He said, the company of the saints will make your burdens light. Isn't that wonderful? The company of the saints, because they express the manifestation of the omniscience of God, will take your burdens. You will feel the great load lift. The company of the evil means quarreling throughout the eight watches of the day. We found that out. Then he also says, that day is blessed which causes you to meet a holy man. Then I might add his teachings too. As you embrace him fervently, sin is driven from the body. Sin means delusion. And finally, one other of Kabir's sayings, through association with a saint comes the remembrance of God. Isn't that beautiful? Through the association with a saint comes the remembrance of the omniscience of God. That hour is recorded to a man's credit in his account with God. All the rest is as valueless as air. Don't you think the saints can help us? They certainly can. And from one other saint, the great yogi Nanak of India, of whom the master spoke often to me, we read this one little passage. The holy saints, the devotees, that's you and me. O Nanak, are ever in happy bloom, eternally blossoming, in bliss. Hear therefore of him, so that all thy sorrows and sin be destroyed. How wonderful. 
So you see the testimony of the saints is the same. A little different variation of things, but underneath the fundamental truth that the power and the common attribute of the saint is the omniscience of God. St. Paul said that very thing in 1 Corinthians 4th and 5th verse. And my speech and my preaching, says St. Paul, was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. The saints recognize and realize that power of God and those who contact them or the, their teaching. Open up the channel for the power of God to flow through each and every one of us. And in closing, a recent saint, our beloved master, Paramahansa Yogananda, left his teaching, surcharged with what? The omniscience and the power of God. And through, through his teaching is available to each and every one who will follow because he was and is a true saint, a true son of God, is available for each and every one of us. Contact with the omniscience of God. Having that, we will want for nothing else because God alone is. All other things are nothing. As the great Nanak said, you may be known throughout universe upon universe and ten times those number of universes, but unless you receive the glance of his grace, God's grace, you are counted as nothing.